Welcome everyone. My name is Tan and I'm an independent certified financial planner practitioner. Today's educational video is on restricted stock unit, RSU. When your company gives you restricted stock units, RSU, you don't actually receive the company stock. The word units means you exchange the units for the actual company stock. The word restricted means that there are requirements you have to meet. It could be based on the length of employment or performance goals. With RSUs, no shares are issued to you at grant. The shares are delivered to you at vesting and that is income to you. RSUs are always worth something unless the stock price drops to zero. For example, the company grants you 1,000 RSU. At vesting, the stock price is $100 per share. 1,000 shares times $100 equal $100,000. The stock price on the grant day does not matter. The stock price matters at vesting because you have full control of the shares. Which means you can sell the shares and get cash for it. RSUs are unfunded promise from the company to you stating the company will give you X numbers of shares if you satisfy the vesting conditions. During the restricted period slash vesting period, RSUs have no shareholder voting rights and normally do not receive dividends. If the company pays dividends on outstanding shares, dividends may be deferred for additional unit or cash when the shares are delivered to you. It is in the plan agreement if the company pays dividends equivalent. You can also check with your human resources department. Restricted stock units and restricted stocks are different. With restricted stocks, during the restricted period slash vesting period, dividends are paid and you have voting rights. Vesting schedule. Clip vesting. You receive all the shares at once, such as you receive all the shares in three years. Graded vesting. You receive shares at regular interval until you receive all the shares. Hybrid of cliff and graded vesting. A combination of some shares upfront, then shares at regular interval until you receive all the shares. Tax withholding method starting with the highest risk due to a concentrated stock position. Cash transfer. You give your company the money to pay for the taxes. All of the vested shares are deposited to your brokerage account. Net share settlement, share surrender, share withholding, net share issuance or net sediment. Your company will give shares equal to the taxes withholding, then the remaining shares will be deposited to your brokerage account. Sell to cover or selling shares. The plan will sell enough shares to cover the taxes withholding, and the remaining shares will be deposited to your brokerage account. Same day sale. The plan will sell all of the shares on the vesting date. After subtracting tax withholding, the net cash will be deposited to your brokerage account. Questions to ask your employer so you can truly understand your RSU. What is my vesting period? Is it how long I have to be with the company and or based on my performance? When and how can I be fully vested? What happens if there is a major company event like a merger or acquisition? What happens if I were to leave or lose my job? become disabled, die, or retire. What are the tax withholding? Can I increase or decrease the tax withholding? Do I have restricted stocks and or restricted stock units? When the shares are vested, how can I have access to it? If the company pays dividend, do I get it and how does it work? Can I designate a beneficiary? Am I expected to receive more RSUs in the future? If so, around how many shares or dollar value? How can I get more RSUs? Your employer might tell you to read the plan agreement and you want to tell them that you read the plan agreement and you want to confirm with them. If your employer cannot answer the questions, ask them who can. When you sell the stocks, ask a qualified tax preparer if you need to file forms 8949 and Schedule D on your tax return. Chances are, 
you do have to file it. The delivery of shares occur at vesting. The vesting can be graded vesting, which means vesting occur over a period of time, or cliff vesting, which means the shares are delivered all at once on a specific date. No shares are is issued until the time of delivery. Some RSU plans let you defer the delivery of the shares so you can defer ordinary income tax. You cannot defer the taxes if the RSUs are delivered to you. Dividends. Dividends on restricted stocks are reported on your W-2 as wages unless you made a Section 83B election at grant and are not eligible for the lower tax rate on the qualified dividends until after vesting. Section 83B election. When you make an 83B election within 30 days from the grant date, you recognize organic income on the value of the stock based on the date of grant instead of at vesting. Restricted stocks can be taxed on the value of the shares at grant instead of at vesting because they are considered property within the Internal Revenue Code Section 83. You do not have this option with RSUs because they are not considered property within the Internal Revenue Code Section 83. Be careful when making an 83B election because if you pay the taxes at grant and your stock might not vest, you didn't hit your goals, or you left the company before the shares are vested. Restricted stocks units are not considered property for the purposes of Internal Revenue Code Section IRC 83 since no actual properties has been transferred and before a IRC 83B election cannot be made with respect to the grant of the restricted stock unit. Taxation summary from my stock option. FICA taxes including the 1.45% Medicare tax plus the 0.9% additional Medicare tax for certain high income taxpayer is due at the vesting date. These arrangements allow the deferral of the dates when awards are taxed must comply with the deferral compensation rules of IRC section 409A. The Federal Insurance Contributions Act is the federal law that requires withholding of three separate taxes from the wages. 6.2% Social Security tax, 1.45% Medicare tax, the regular Medicare tax, and 0.9% Medicare surtax for high income earners. Taxation summary from Charles Schwab. With RSUs, you are taxed when the shares are delivered, which is almost always at vesting. Your taxable income is the market value of the shares at vesting. You have compensation income subject to federal and employment tax, Social Security and Medicare, and any state and local tax. The income is subject to mandatory supplemental wage withholding. Withholding taxes which for U.S. employee appears on Form W-2 along with the income including the following. Federal income tax at the flat supplemental wage rate unless your company uses your W-4 rate. Social Security up to the yearly maximum in Medicare. State and local taxes when applicable. Taxes. Tax at vesting. You do not have a tax liability when RSUs are granted to you. You have a tax liability when the RSUs are vested by reporting the income based on the fair market value of the stocks. Tax when selling the stocks. The change after the vesting date is considered capital gain or loss. Short term or long term depending on the holding period. If you sell the stocks at a higher price than the value at vesting, you have a capital gain. If you sell the stocks at lower price than the value at vesting, you have a capital loss. If you sell the stocks after one year, a one year plus one day, that is considered long term. If you sell the stocks within a year, that is considered short term. The most favorable tax treatment is long term capital gains. If you have a capital loss, losses on your investments are first used to offset capital gains on the same type. So short term losses are first deducted against short term gains and long term losses are deducted against long term gains. Net losses of neither types can be then deducted against other kind of gain. So for example, if you have $2,000 of short term losses and $1,000 of short term gain, the net $1,000 short term loss can be deducted against your net long term gain, assuming you have one.
if you have an overall net capital loss for the year, you can deduct up to $3,000 of that loss against other kinds of income, including your salary and interest income, for example. Any excess net capital loss can be carried over to subsequent years to be deducted against capital gains and against up to 3,000 of other kinds of income. If you use married filing separately filing status, however, the annual net capital loss deductions limit is only $1,500. You should get a 1099B from your broker. Summary. And grant equal no tax. Invest in equal regular income tax, Medicare tax, and Social Security tax. At sales equal short term or long term, and gains or loss depending on the holding period and sale price. Strategies to consider. Sell the RSU once they are invested, then use the money to build a diversified investment portfolio, pay debts, and are fun and gold because RSUs are taxed as soon as they vest. Hold the company stocks and use option contracts to mitigate the risk. Hold the company stocks and build a portfolio around the company stock. If you want to hold the company stocks, you should understand the risk of investing in individual stocks. I made a video on the risk of investing in individual stocks and you can check it out at 10fan.com slash blog. Take advantage of the volatility in the stock price. If you can sell certain shares at a loss, it is advantageous to sell the shares and realize the loss. Why? Lower your tax burden. Diversifying away from a concentrated stock position. Converting stocks into cash. Capital losses offset capital gains up to $3,000 from capital losses can upsets already income, then remaining losses can carry forward into the future. If you really like your company stock, you can buy it back later, but be careful of the watch sale rule. This video is for educational only and tax law changes. You should talk to a professional before making any informed decision. Thank you for watching. This is Tan, your trust advisor.